Opera singer Marilyn Horn is one of the great divas of all time. Her glorious voice has filled every major music hall around the globe. During a remarkable career that spans four decades, she is the recipient of the prestigious National Medal of Arts and numerous Grammy Awards. She charmed the entire nation when she sang at President Clinton's inauguration. After all, she is our present favorite classical singer, and we're very pleased to have her here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I should point out, you, you, Barney Frank, in a previous conversation, said he's a courageous to take the stand. He did. I mean, he's your guy. Oh, yeah. You, know, you went to <laughs> Arkansas. Or where, you met him where? You were singing, In Arkansas. You know, and he comes backstage. Eight years ago. Yeah. And, and actually... He remembered it better than I did because I had to look it up in my date book when I'd yeah. met him. And it was, I thought it was seven years ago. And at the inauguration, my daughter was with me. And at the luncheon, we were speaking. And he didn't miss a beat. I said, President Clinton, this is my daughter, Angela. And he said, Angela, let me tell you about your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, eight years ago, I walked into her dressing room in Little Rock. And I said, hi, I'm Bill Clinton. And she said, listen. I know who you are. I'm a lifelong Democrat. I've had my eye on you. Yeah. And you, the story goes, came back to some of your friends around these parts and said, I met a guy who's going to be president of the United States Absolutely. someday. Absolutely. I didn't remember that, but of course, when, of course you know, when the campaign started to get hot. <laughs> no, they yeah, reminded me. Yeah. Yeah. One of your friends reminded you who you had told that right. to. Now, right. now, tell me about, you sang here at the Madison Square Garden. Right, at the time the of the uh, convention. of the convention, mm -hmm. and then the the big one, the inauguration. The inauguration. It's outside. You got to be a little bit worried. You don't know about the temperature. I mean, he's going to uh, your voice. You've got one instrument, and this instrument is the most important thing that you can protect. Any questions there about singing outside? You know, there there with singers, you you know, you just sometimes have to just roll with it, and yeah. you just have to say, you know, I'll get through it no matter what. Okay, it, we're now talking about the Star Spangled Banner. Well, the two songs yeah. that went before and, and it also. Right. The Star Spangled Banner, of course, is the one that everybody knows the words to. So right. for like five days, any time I could think about it, I had the words going through my head. <laughs> uh, you know, you don't want to make a fool yeah. out of yourself. I did the same thing for the convention. Uh, how important, when you put all the moments that you have had, do you put this moment oh, that yes. I'm about ready to see? Where do you put it? Yeah, this is... This is one of the very biggest. Yeah. I mean, this is up there, is it? Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and look, I come from a long line of Democrats, and my mother and father. I'm sure this, if they were alive, this would have been one of the biggest thrills of their lives because they were big FDR and Harry Truman people, and you know. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the same line. All right. Uh, this is we. We've got a tape here of you singing "Make a Rainbow" from uh, Portia Nelson. Right. All yes. Right. Here it is. Roll tape. Hold on one second. <laughs> yeah. As you but watch this, a billion people oh, sure, that's watching a big that. Thing. 
around the world, yeah. at least a billion. And Make a Rainbow was written for you. It was written for me, actually, more than 25 years ago by Portia Nelson. And, uh, you know, because of the Rainbow Coalition and all that, maybe people think that's where the idea came from. No way. This song has been around a long time. And uh, it was an, an enormous thrill for me to be able to sing it, you know. And I think it, it suits very much Clinton, I think. Mm. My friend Mike Wallace, in introducing you, said, Say opera star, and you think of an imperious, tempestuous, glamorous figure, swathed in sable and awash in adulation. The down-home diva, the, the, the down diva is none of the above except the last. She's been awash in adulation for at least a quarter of a century. A force of nature, she's been called the finest opera singer of the generation. But beyond that, we found mezzo-soprano Marilyn Horn, her friends call her Jackie, a woman not unlike your friendly neighbor in the suburbs. Do you think that's a fair characterization? I guess it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it is. I excuse me. I am just getting over a cold. Okay, does this water do any good or not? <laughs> no. Okay. But I'm on my. It's it, on its way out. All right. Um, Go ahead. I, I love my friends, and right. I and I love to interact with people, and and I I guess if you know one could say I'm a people person. You know, yeah. I mean I'm not going to say that uh, all humanity is wonderful and looking at things through rose-colored glasses. But um, I think my, my nature is one to go out to people, and I think my nature also is to help people mm. and to do things if I can for people. Tell me about this instrument you have, and, and, I mean, and how do you characterize it, and what makes a voice like you have? Well, my instrument you know, was actually fairly um, troublesome for me for a while to decide what I, what I really wanted to sing in what, what repertory, and that means mainly opera because that's where you have to really choose. Do you want to be the soprano or the mezzo-soprano? And um, I am basically a mezzo-soprano contralto type, but I sang all my life from the time I could speak, literally. So I was a soprano already at, at, you know, one and a half years of age. And therefore, the higher voice is more natural to a child. A child doesn't have a lower voice. That suddenly arrived with puberty. Here's what I'm curious about, though. What, I mean, how many young, when you were born, how many other young women were born uh, who, who had the same thing you had, but something else made you where you are today? I'm just curious about the notion of the gift and what, what is it drive? Is it will? You bet. That you bet. makes the difference. Where you the bet. ten other people within a hundred You're, you're saying we, we've been, been given the equal talent yeah, and right, everything. Right. You got to bet that drive is a biggie. And I'll tell you one biggie. other thing: <laughs> <laughs> wanting it. Wanting it. When I talk to young singers and I hear what they have to say, and somebody says, "I'm going to have it." I want it. Nothing's going to stop me. That's the person who means <laughs> maybe it. Maybe the one who's going to be on stage <laughs> right. at the net right there. Or maybe. Right. Yeah, but anybody who doesn't say that will not be there, uh, probably. Well, they might be there. I don't know. But, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to bet not too many, you know. Mm. There are degrees of careers, too. You know, there are, there are valid careers that are, are on a C level or on a yeah. B level. But if you're going to aim for the A level, you got to have an, a little extra behind you. But do people who are aiming for the A level and who make it to the A level, who are there, right? Because you didn't come to the Met early. And how? And I did how? Not. That's right. <laughs> do those people uh, have? Are there people who make it to the Met who don't have uh, the great voice, the great gift, who who make it on other things? Or be, uh, there's got to be a certain... I think you've got to have a certain amount of voice. Yeah. You've got to have a certain amount of ability to sing. That's extraordinary and, ability. Yes. And right. yes, and to speak with that instrument to yeah. the public. You know what I mean? To yeah. touch the public. But there are always people who they've said, you know, so-and-so was a great singing actress. Right. They used to say that about um, Callis. Yes, they did say that right. about Collis, but they forget that Collis was also an incredible singer right. in the beginning, right. or an incredible technician. Right. She maybe didn't have the most gorgeous quality, in, but that was really one hell of a singer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here to tell you. Yeah. Now, who, who have, who's been a guide for you? Has there been somewhere, someone who you said, when you looked up, 
a, a couple of people's uh, voices yeah. I certainly admired. One was Rosa Poncel, right. the great right. American right. Right. diva, and Elizabeth Rethberg, a great right. German who became an American singer. And um, I've, I've had good, I had great teachers, you know, I had wonderful people. I, I think sometimes uh, it was good luck, and then on the other hand, I think, well, maybe you were a little smarter than you thought, maybe you chose well. Yeah. But I had wonderful advice from my teachers, too. Who taught you what? Oh, um, to be patient, not to want it overnight, that it's, you know, it's one step at a time, that there's an enormous amount to learn. Mm -hmm. And you just, and it's, it's just, and it, it's an incredible, voluminous amount that one has to learn to be able to do this. How does a voice change from decade to decade to decade? What do you, do you lose? Well, I mean, in, in my case, certainly the, the high notes are, right. not, are not what they used to be. Right. You, you know, the really, is that true the for most ease. singers? That no, because there are, you know, for instance, there are some great tenors who, who at 80 years of age still have their high notes, yeah. but they don't have their middle voice. Right. With me, it's, it's, you know, the lower end of it has and been a lot easier. And so you didn't change easier. your repertoire? I haven't really changed my repertoire yet. Yeah. I, what I've done is I've just now started to drop things out yeah. of my repertoire. Yeah. Rossini. Yes. What's the fascination for you? Well, the fascination of Rossini is that he wrote some unbelievable roles that suit my voice. And they are roles that had been mainly put on the shelf and nobody had heard them for many, many years. And suddenly these roles, uh, these operas were starting to be revived and we saw, we suddenly saw my gosh, here, here's the part that I can sing, that maybe nobody else can. Yeah. And, and those were really what we call the contralto coloratura parts, which means you sing, they have to sing very strongly in your lower register a good deal of the evening and move the voice very fast. What, what, when I mentioned the moments, we, we talked about the, at the inauguration, I mean, what are the moments that, that you treasure so far in terms of, of the career you've had where you, when you talk to your grandchildren, you say, this was, well, this was look, really special. There are highlights that yeah. one aims for. If you're an American singer and yeah. you grew, you're born in Bradford, Pennsylvania, right. and you grow up in Long Beach, California, yes. you're certainly, and you want to be an opera singer, you've yeah. got your eye on the Met. Yeah. There is just no doubt about it. Just a question it. of how long. It's it, exactly how yeah. long and with what. And, and you felt you had to go to Europe. I did at that time. I felt that it was the definite um, way for me to go and have some uh, galley years where I could really slug it out and find out my possibilities on the stage and, and be awful. Yeah. You know, everybody's got to have the minor leagues, right? Were you ever <laughs> awful? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> did you know it, though? Yeah, a couple of times I think I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty honest about that. You know. I mean, I certainly, I don't think I've been awful too many yeah. times, but I, I certainly can say, look, that wasn't so great tonight, or, you know, I can do that better than mm. that. Any regrets? Oh gosh, you know, I think it's a little late to come up with regrets. Um, occasionally, I think maybe the whole thing. I shouldn't have done because oh, it's been such on, a really? serious, because it's been such a dedication. But it doesn't last very long. Then I think, what else would you well, have but, done? But the dedication, <laughs> you think because I might have, that it's not worth the price. You're not saying that. Sometimes that crosses my mind. It does. What did you give up? Um, well, I think I, I probably gave you up. You know, there are people who want to be you who are listening. Oh, they're they're listening know, in right now. They're saying, they gotta is, know she, that this, is, she, is she saying that it's not worth it? That they've got to know that this, these are passing thoughts, yeah, right. and I'd be a fool if I didn't have yeah, them. Yeah. I, I'd be an, a really... And it's easy to say it once right. you have achieved the top of the mountain to right. say, well, I don't know, right. because you can never, never know if you've never been to the top. Exactly. And, and who knows, the frustration may, might have been monumental. Right. But, for instance, um, a few weeks ago, I sang a recital here in New York, and I was so nervous beforehand. Now, I don't know how many recitals I've sung in New York, but plenty, and I've certainly sung over 1,200 recitals in my yeah. lifetime. And I said to my accompanist, I said, I don't think I can stand this pressure anymore. It, 
that you know the, and that pressure what, the anxiety the no, it's the pressure of going out and wanting to be I don't want to say perfect but wanting to to achieve everything that you've set out to achieve musically vocally artistically with expression mm. trying to get it all it yeah. that's a lot and it just happened that it was a really good night yeah. it really was and I don't know why that it all came together that night but it was a really good night and so the pressure went away and then I said to the audience gee I had a really good time <laughs> but what did, did were there ever moments in which you thought maybe you with all the drive you have and all the the focus were there ever moments in which you said I don't think this price is worth paying no never never, never. no no no, I'm looking at it now from hindsight. Right. I'm looking at it from, from somebody for who's been been through it all. You know, yeah. never, never once. What was hardest about it? I think probably the most difficult thing was when I became a mother, yeah. and I uh, had to uh, not be there all the time for my daughter. That that was tough. Yeah, and that was the trickiest. Becoming a mother and not being able to be there mm -hmm. all you know, the time. To be on tour, to be in Europe, to be somewhere. Right, right. When, Even though when I, your child is at an important moment. Right. I didn't miss too many of those, yeah. I, I must say. I, I really didn't because I, I was smart enough to look at my calendar and block things out, knowing when things yeah. were coming and, you know, and obviously, you know, birthdays yeah. and holidays and things like that. Having Never. said all that, are you the happiest, though, when, you, when it all has come together? I mean, can you define anything that's happier than being on stage in a role that, that, that you own? and you know you have done it as well as it's, it's been done. I suppose afterwards yeah. is happier because I know I did it. Yeah. Not, at the moment, one can be you know, taken up in the moment of doing it, but you know, it's, the, it's the old thing. You're, not, you're the, the actor or the perf outside looking in. Yeah. You're not really it. You know? and, and I think it's afterwards thinking, wow, I, I, I did that well. Mm. I really did that well. What's next for you? I'm on my way to Europe again um, um, in a week to do uh, recitals and concerts with orchestra in France, Italy, and uh, Germany and Greece. And um, I've got, sadly and happily, I'm doing my very last Rossini on stage in September, October at Covent Garden. I've decided that um, it's time I, I can't, these are the most difficult things that are written for the human voice to sing. Yeah. And it's time for me to say, I can't do them like I did them. I can still do it damn good, damn yeah. well. <laughs> but but I, it's not the same. And I don't want to be compared to myself in the past. And, and I want to go out on a, you know, in a, in a blaze of goodwill. And so I'm saying bye-bye to Rossini on the stage. That doesn't mean I won't sing what a night an be. occasional aria. It'll be bittersweet. <laughs> I think the president should go to London for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Pleasure you. To have you here. It's great Marilyn to be here. Marilyn Horn, coming up, Neil Sheehan. Neil Sheehan has a fascinating piece uh, he, uh, in the New Yorker magazine about a return to uh, Vietnam, where he has written eloquently and been awarded a Pulitzer Prize for his writing. We'll talk to this distinguished correspondent about his views on Vietnam today, missing in action, and all of that. Stay with us.